with one voice, we will sing. Every tribe and every tongue brings a harmony. With one voice, we will bring heaven's beautiful melodies down to this earth. Holy Spirit, I pray that you allow me to make it through this today, Lord God. Oh, Today's message is entitled, The Battlefield of the Mind. We're going after this something this morning, folks. We're going after the devil this morning. Because I ain't scared of them. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going after something this morning. I'm here on assignment this morning. Oh, glory. I believe that we are dealing with a generation that is destined to do great things. A generation that has been set apart, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. A generation that God has blown the breath of life into. So that when they come to themselves. See, sometimes they get like the prodigal son and they go away into the world. And they squander a little bit of their inheritance. But when they come back and they come to themselves, they will do things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Signs and wonders shall follow them as proof of God's divine glory upon them. Ah, are you with me, church? Amen. Just as I know this, the enemy knows this as well. The enemy knows this as well. And his focus, and his focus is to roam in and out of their lives, back and forth, seeking out the weak to see who he may destroy and derail from their destiny. Are you with me? Let me park there for a second because we have to understand what is going on here when we're talking about the battlefield of the mind. You see, we teach our young folks and our young adults, we teach them how to pray. We teach them how to pray. We teach them how to worship. We teach them how to eat, lead others to Christ. We even teach them how to tithe. But you see, we also have a responsibility to teach them how to defend themselves when the enemy shows up in their mind. Because see, when he shows up in their mind, we can't see that. We can't see that joker when he shows up there. So that's when our spirit of discernment has to kick in. You see? I have to take my time with this one because we got to get this one. We can't see him when he shows up in the mind of our child or our loved one. 
So our spirit discernment has to kick in. Because, see, we just might have some young folks and some young adults or some old saints dealing with some stuff. What type of stuff, Pastor Vance? Glad you asked. Some stuff like anger issues. Some stuff like lust. Some stuff like sexual promiscuity. Some stuff like alcoholism. Some stuff like drug addiction. Some stuff like cutting. Some stuff like suicide. Oh, glory to God. So when that demonic force shows up in their mind, oh, glory. They need to know how to defend themselves. Are you with me, church? <laughs> Preach it, brother. Right. Oh, glory. I think that we have, I think that we can control, if we can control what we're thinking, what we allow to affect us emotionally and mentally, we begin to, we can make better choices as believers. Which would entail show a truer representation of the boldness and the love of Christ. And by doing this, we can spark curiosity of, in men and women to give them a better understanding of the things of God. You see, we'll be able to op open up opportunities for dialogue based solely on our decision-making process and the way that we carry ourselves. Well, where, where are you going, Pastor Vance? Look at your neighbor and say, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. So I said all of that to say this. I believe that we must first learn how to control our thought process, which will help us create emotional stability and consistency in our spiritual walk. As we begin to explore this topic today of the battlefield of the mind, y'all thought we was already in it, didn't you? That's just my introduction. According to God. As we begin to store to explore this topic of the battlefield of the mind and the power to control it, we're going to see what the Bible has to say about it. Because make no mistake, my friend, the mind is a true battlefield. That's right. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Which tells me that we have the same ability to control what we allow to affect us mentally and emotionally. All we have to do is tap into the source, which is God, and access the resource of control. Let us go to the Lord and pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to assemble together this morning, oh God. Decrease, advance, and increase in you, Father. Hide me behind your cross, oh God. Anoint my ears so that I may hear, oh God. Anoint my mouth so that you may speak, Father. Anoint my heart and fill it with love, O oh Lord. Saturate this place with your glory, God. Let your word do what it sets out to do, O oh God. Let there be deliverance in your word today, O oh God. Breakthrough in your word today, O oh God. Freedom and liberty in your word today, O oh God. This is the thing that I ask. In Jesus' mighty name. And the saints of living water said amen, amen. and amen. As you will see, the Apostle Paul had a clear revelation containing this truth. If you would open your Bibles with me and turn to the book of Romans. And we're going to make a pit stop right around chapter 8. When you got to say, I love the Lord. Oh, say it like you mean it. I love the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And we're going to pick up our reading right around verse 5. And I'm reading out of the King James Version, which is my favorite, so it might be just a little bit different. Amen? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
because the carnal mind is imminent against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. What Paul is saying here is this. Which way do your thoughts move with most pleasure? Which way do your thoughts move with most pleasure? Is it after the things of the flesh and of the world, or is it after the things of the Spirit of God? You have to take authority over your thoughts. Because he goes on to say that the mind is intimate against God, which means hostile, which means it doesn't want to come subject. But through prayer, ah, through faith, in the shed blood of Jesus, everything comes subject to the power of God. In verse 5, he uses the word mind as a verb. Did y'all notice that? He said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Hmm. He uses the word mind as a verb. The word mind in the Greek is pronounced for neho, which means to have something as habit of your thought. Something in which you place total interest in. You see, if your mind is not Christ-centered, and your interest is constantly on the carnal thing, the thing of the flesh, the thing of the world, the result is spiritual death. The result is spiritual death. However, if there is an, if, if, however, if the interests of the mind are placed on the things of the Spirit of God, there is a peace in life that passes all understanding. So we must learn to control what we allow to have influence over our thoughts. I, for me, want the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in me that is also in Christ Jesus. That's what I'm after. Oh, glory to God. Flip with me just a little bit to our foundational scripture. We're going to the book of 2 Corinthians. Ah. We're going to park right around chapter 10. Look at your neighbor and say, yeah, we're going somewhere this morning. We're after the enemy this morning. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to pick up our reading right around verse 3. And it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Control. Control what we are thinking. Control what we allow to frame our thinking. Oh, glory to God. You see, we may walk in the flesh, but we don't war half of the flesh. You can't fight a spiritual battle with a physical weapon. Amen. You fight spiritual battles with a spiritual weapon. Glory to God. And when it comes to the mind, baby, that's a spiritual battlefield. Come on. Mm. When the enemy shows up in your thought process, you have to evict his behind right away. <laughs> He's got to go. You cannot toy with the idea. You can't play with him. You can't even entertain the seed that is trying to plant in your mind. Because if you do, and that thing take root, it morphs into an evil that's way beyond your understanding. Are you with me, church? Come on now. You can't play with that joker. You got to get him on the bottom there. Because if it morphs into something evil, guess what's going to happen? It's going to begin to bear fruit. It goes from your imagination to your reality. Y'all are looking at me.
at me like I'm crazy. But rest assured, the Spirit of God knows what he's talking about. It goes from here to here. Oh, glory. And then it takes you down a road, down a path that you ain't even supposed to be on. And you end up asking yourself, how did I get here? I once had this, I once had that. How did I get here? Because you entertain something that the devil put on your mind. Jesus knew how to deal with it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus knew how to deal with that joker when he showed up. Open your, go to, go to Luke. Yes, thank you, Father. Go to Luke. Chapter 4. Yeah, 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 yeah. If my memory serves me correctly, that's when Jesus had just came back in Jordan, from Jordan after he had been out in the wilderness tempted by the devil for about 40 days. Is that where you're at, church? Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. The first thing he says in verse 1 is that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I just like that part, but we're going to move on down a little bit. Look, look, look. Lord have mercy. Glory to God. I got to take my time with this one because this is important. The devil, Jesus knew how to deal with him. He knew how to deal with him. He didn't even entertain that hot garbage that the devil was trying to say to him. If you look in, 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 in verse 3, it says, And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may make bread. See, he understood Jesus had just came out of the wilderness. He was hungry. He needed some groceries. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the devil tried to tempt him with that which he was weak of. Are you with me? But what did Jesus say? Jesus know how to deal with that joker. He said, it is written that man shall not live alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's written. That's what Jesus said. But that wasn't enough for the devil. He came back again. Huh. And what happened here, if y'all allow me to paraphrase, the devil told Jesus, if you just fall down and worship me, I will give you everything that your heart desires. I will make you ruler over kingdoms. I will set you up high. Huh. What did Jesus say? In verse 8, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Yeah. Are y'all with me now? But that did knock the devil out. Because he came back again. Third time's the charm. And, 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 and what happened here, paraphrasing again, the devil had took Jesus up to the highest point in Jerusalem and sat him on the pinnacle of the temple and said, if you fall, you ain't going to hurt yourself because the devil knows the word too, right? Because it says right here that the devil said in verse, in, in, in verse 10, for it is written, he shall keep his angels charge over thee to keep thee. In other words, if you fall, the angels are going to wrap themselves around you and take care of you. Ah, but what did Jesus say? Jesus says, it is said, which means it is written. That thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus didn't even entertain that garbage that the devil was trying to implant into his mindset. We do not have the luxury to play around with the ideas of the devil. When he shows up, he's got to go. Gotta go, gotta go. You must bring into submission every thought that goes against the wisdom and the knowledge of God. But you fellas right here, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you got to square off with the enemy like a UFC fighter in the octagon. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to square off with him knowing that your authority comes from Christ and is accompanied by grace. And you have to call that devil a liar to his face, you see. Letting him know that he has no authority over you, no dominion in you, no dominion in your mindset. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through Christ to the pulling down of strongholds. Come on. Are
Are y'all with me, saints? Which tells me when you start to engage the enemy with the weapon of belief. When you start to engage the enemy with the weapon of belief, in other words, when you start saying, hmm, I believe that Jesus went to the whipping post for me. I believe that he paid the ransom for me. I believe that he was dead, buried, and resurrected on the third day for me. I believe that I am forgiven. I believe that my sins are washed as far as away from the east is to the west. When you engage him with the word of belief, now you got that joker's attention. He's standing up. Ha. Ah. Yeah. Now you got his attention. And then, and then you start to punch him with the word of God. And you're cutting him with every blow that you strike. You see. And you're just punching him with the word. You start saying things like, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am a chosen generation, a peculiar type individual. I am beauty from ashes. I am uniquely and wonderfully made. Once you start saying things like that, oh glory, oh glory, oh glory, he starts to back up off of you then, you see. Because see, now he realizes that you're not fighting underneath your own strength. But you're fighting through the power of God. And you have the whole host of heaven backing you up. Oh, glory. Or you can shout right there. It's okay. Because you're fighting with God's power now. Not your own strength. Every time he tries to put a negative thought in your head, you replace it with a positive word from God. It said, casting down every imagination that the enemy tries to throw up to you to get you to buy into that lie he's trying to say. Because he's the father of lies. He invented the lie back in the garden. Y'all know the story. He's the father of lies. And all he really wants to do is rob you of your destiny and stop you from fulfilling your plan in God's plan. That's what he wants to do. You have to know that God has given you the ability to bring into captive every thought, not some thoughts, not partial thoughts, brother, all thoughts, all meaning complete, oh glory to God. <clears throat> you just have to tap into the source, which is God. And identify what the enemy is trying to do. Once you know what that joke is up to, then you know how to engage him. Engage him to destroy him. You don't want to just knock him down. You want to take him out. <sighs> glory, 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 glory. But see, then you realize. that God already knew this battle was coming. He has already equipped you for this. He has already equipped you for this. Because when you step back and you hear your faith working, you hear your belief working, you hear your word working, there's action behind it. You're speaking all those things that's not as though there were. You realize that you're standing there in your Standing there in your armor. Because you see, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Against rulers of darkness. Against principalities and power. But you're standing there because God has prepared you in your armor with your lines girded with truth. Wearing your breastplate of righteousness. Your helmet of salvation sits upon your head. You're blocking those darts with your, with, your, with, with, with your shield of faith. Engaging the enemy with your sword, which is your word. Cutting with every blow. God has already prepared you. He has already equipped you. You have to tap into the source which is God, and access the resource. Don't entertain the wiles of the enemy.
And in closing, because I ain't going to keep y'all long. From the cradle to the grave, there's always going to be constant struggle against the forces of enemy, the forces of evil, the uncorruptible lust of the flesh, the imposing temptation offered by this world. But remember, you are not struggling against flesh and blood or another person, but against spiritual forces that possess an unbelievable power. And you have to deal with them from a spiritual perspective. Know what your weapons are. Teach your children their weapons. How to engage. Truth. Truth is important. It's have some integrity. Truth is so crucial because a man, a dishonest man or woman of God cannot withstand against the father of lies. How are you going to withstand against him if you're engaging in the same activity that he's engaging in? That's right. <clears throat> integrity. Truth, righteousness. Live righteously as you walk day by day. Have some character. Have some character as a man and woman of God. Even indeed, when you do something, don't do it to another person. Do it as you're doing it unto God. Do it with the spirit of excellence. <clears throat> the gospel. Know the gospel. Have it in your heart. Make sure you possess the gospel. Share it wherever your feet may take you. Salvation. There's deliverance in salvation. Work on your salvation daily. Daily work on your salvation. Do all you can to protect it. And sometimes you might even have to be like David and encourage yourself. Do what you need to do and God will do what he does. Word of God. Take up your sword. Take up your sword. Study. Learn it. Memorize it. Use it. Become a student of the word. And most importantly, live by it. And use it to fight and win some battles on the day to day. The most, most, most important is prayer. Because you see, saints, prayer is the belt buckle that holds all your armor together. Without prayer, your armor is useless. Prayer is what attaches everything and keep it all intact. That, that, that does not allow any cracks in your armor. Without prayer, perseverance and patience, those things are essential. Prayer. I have the unction today, as we come to a close, to pray for every young person that's in the sound of my voice. Because see, I know they might be dealing with some stuff, and they may not tell you, but like I said, we're going after some things today. I believe that deliverance is here today. You don't know the thoughts that might be in their head because you can't see them. So we're going to cover them today. We're going to cover them with the blood. <clears throat> we're going to cover them today, my brother. Today. So I'm going to ask for some of you older saints to join me. And I want every young person that's under the age of 25 to start making your way to this altar today. It's not an option. Come on up here today. We're going to cover them today. And I need some of you older saints, Pastor, Brother Shane. We're going to pray over these young people today. We're going to cover them today. No, my young people, I love you all, but know that you got to defend yourself. You got weapons to use against the enemy when he shows up in your mind. You have to begin to speak to him. You cannot entertain that hot garbage that he's trying to put in your mindset. You have to begin to speak to that enemy and kick him out. You can't say, well, I'm going to do this because it's harmless. 
You never know what that thing is going to morph into. Are y'all with me, young people? Doesn't matter what it is, because I know that we all deal with some stuff. And you may not be able to talk to your parents or, or, or your older siblings, but know that there's people here in this house that you can talk to. Amen? So I want all you young people just to bow your heads. I want us older saints to just touch somebody. Just love them some, some of these older saints. And just, let's just pray over them. First of all, Father God, if there's anything that's in the hearts of these people that's standing here at your altar, I ask that you eradicate it right now in the name of Jesus. It must go right now, oh God. Open their heart, Father God, to be able to receive what it is you have to impart, oh God. Give them a clean heart, Father God. Pure heart and clean hands, oh Lord. Father God, these are your children. Cover them, Father God, with the blood. Keep them out of harm's way. Give them the strength to stand against the enemy when he shows up in their mindset, oh Father. Let them know that they have a resource in you, a source in you, oh God, and a resource in us, oh Father God, as elders of this church to protect them from the wiles of the enemy, to teach them how to defend themselves, oh God. As they go day to day, Father God, living out their life, protect them in the school halls, as in the workplace, oh God. Hide your word in their heart, in, your, in their heart, as they begin to study it, oh God. Let them commemorate to memory and end in their heart. So they may be able to use it when the enemy shows up, oh God. Keep them close to your bosom, oh God. Keep your hedge of protection around them, Father. I loose the spirit of love over them, oh God. That no weapon formed against them shall prosper. You are great, oh God, and show yourself mighty in their lives. Because I know that they are destined to do great things. And the enemy wants to rob them of their destiny before they become spiritually mature. And I refuse to let that happen, oh God. I stand here with the rest of these elders in the gap for these young people, oh God. Protecting their souls and guiding them as they go forth, oh Lord. To fulfill your purpose for them. 